All right, we move ahead to our next guest who on Friday night did what all fighters strive to do, go out on top after a dominant five-round unanimous decision went over Joe Elmore at BKFC 16. He announces retirement from combat sports. Happy to welcome UFC vet, WEC vet, bare knuckle vet, veteran of a lot of different things. Leonard Garcia, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, buddy. Trying to heal up a little bit. My hands still look like Mickey Mouse hands, and uh, my face is still a little sore, but uh, it, it was good, man. It was, I feel great. When, when, when you lose, it hurts a lot more, but when you win, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. absolutely. C- congratulations on the win. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, you know, the memorable career, man. First off, now that we're a couple of days into your combat sports retirement, like how does it feel? Like, does it feel real? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, it's funny. I was watching. I always watch boxing. I watch all different things. And I'm watching the guy slipping punches. And we had been working on that so much for this fight, especially. And I was like, thank God I never have to worry about slipping another punch, at least in a combat sport you know, for training and everything. Of course, I'm still going to keep moving around, but at least I got a headgear then. But now I, I'm glad I don't have any bare knuckles coming at me. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you went five hard rounds with a guy. Uh, I believe that was, he hadn't lost before in bare knuckle competition. And oh, he was definitely undefeated. Yeah, not anymore. But uh, one of the things you said is you took this fight with Joe to kind of prove that you were the the top dog at 165 pounds. So I'm curious, did you know heading into the fight that this was going to be it for you, win or lose, draw? You were stepping in there for the last time? Yeah. Um, when when uh, I had been retired for two and a half years when I got the call from Bare Knuckle, and uh, I was done. You know, I had retired and um, got this opportunity. So um, it took about a week to talk my wife into it. Um, the first fight was in Cancun. So that helped a lot. Uh, but uh, like it, it, it was a spiritual search, man. You know, I've been I've been super involved in church uh, uh, ever since I had retired. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things, man. I didn't know for sure if I was going to come back or not. I didn't know if, if she was going to let me. I didn't know if my job was going to let me. I didn't know how it was always going to work out. So, um, you know, I prayed a lot. And really, really sat down and thought about it. He offered me a three-fight deal. And I presented those three fights. And I said, if I play my cards correctly, if I beat this first guy, I know it's for an international title. It could lead me to the title within these three fights. Um, and I could be the ranked number one guy. So uh, I, I made the deal with her. I prayed about that deal. So I essentially made the deal with God as well. And then, of course, I went to the company and and, and made the deal with the company. So um, it was like a, a it all worked out that way. It all made sense to just do three fights. Um, of course, I veered away from the path and entered the 155 tournament when I fought Jim Mailers. And of course, that didn't go my way. And I think that was just a funny way of telling me, don't veer from the path, you know, keep going after it. And then uh, I thought it was crazy that Joe Elmore was calling me out when he was ranked number one. And I was like, I mean, this is it. All the cards aligned. Everything lined up. The only problem was Joe Elmore was a scary individual. You know what I mean? So to say yes to that was like, holy crap. You know, like, what, uh, is this really the path? You know, is this is is, is this what it is? But um, after – watching him fight and uh really tom show coming down and helping me get ready for him was a massive help mentally like it really really like joe uh, uh tom show has no idea what kind of impact he had but for him to spend five rounds in there with a guy like joe and then to come here and tell me you're ready man it just it just all fell together and it fell into place and you never really hear about a guy losing a fight and then fighting the number one guy. So that's how I knew God had a little intervention in there and, and a couple of things. So um, to walk away after that with that one deal being made, it was it was like a surreal thing. And uh, I just I'm a man of my word, man. And and uh, I've always held true to that. And and I figured it was the best thing. And, and uh, really, after performing like that, everybody saying, why why would you leave now you look better than ever like your movement was good you never got over your feet 
you weren't falling down. You were, I mean, you just stayed composed the whole time. So uh, I also think that's when you want to walk away when people don't want you to go. You don't want to walk away when they're asking you to leave, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It was, the whole thing was like kismet, man. It was like meant to be. That's it, man. That's exactly what it was, man. It was meant to be um, perfect fight, perfect. Uh, e- e- everything just felt so good, man. Uh, training camp was actually fun. Like I hadn't had fun in a training camp for years. And uh, it was like the harder I worked, the better it was. We're in the back warming up. And he was like running me through all these combos, like trying to get me to blow my lungs out because it's always good for me to blow my lungs before I go out just because I'm, I'm like a second win type of guy because I'll get my second and third win and I get stronger and stronger. So they, uh, he was trying to get me to blow my lungs out. And he was like, I, I don't know what to do. Go get in the hallway and run some sprints. So I was in the hallway running sprints back and forth. And I would get back and I was just like, you know, and he was like, why aren't you breathing hard? And I was like, I don't know. I'm not getting tired. And he was like, Okay, we're ready. So uh, a- a- everything, like you said, man, it, it just it all fell together at the at the perfect time. So it was good. What did you take away from the bare knuckle experience in general? I mean, you obviously, like you just said, you got yourself in peak physical condition. You were getting tired before the fight, running, sprinting up and down the halls. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously a different world than yeah. the MMA sides of thing side of things. But um, like, what did you take away from those three fights, especially the final one with Joe? You know. Um, Every time you're in a fight, any time that you're competing, there's a feeling that comes on you that it's like chaos, it's happiness, it's sadness, it's fear, all these different emotions. In bare knuckle, it's intensified by – it's like the hair on your body, you can feel it, like on the back of your neck, on your chest, on your sides, like the little bitty hairs that you can't see – you feel those, you feel more alive for some reason. And I think it's just the fact that it's the, the, the oldest form of combat. Like if you really sit back and think about it, I mean, there was fist fights, you know, when, when, when Jesus was walking the earth, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like our, our first line of defense and our last line of defense is your fist. And you, when, when, when you think about that and you get out there and you're competing professionally, with only that as your only aspect, I think it's exhilarating. Like for me, um, and I always say it this way, but I don't mean it this way. But what I mean, what I say is, I feel more alive in there than I've ever felt before. And of course, that's hard to say because I'm married to a fantastic woman. I got a beautiful family, so I don't mean it like I feel alive. But like my senses, my everything inside of you is awake. Like your, I don't know if it if it hits different uh, uh, electrodes in your brain or whatever it is, but I definitely it's a definite fence sense of your you feel for you like it's crazy man it's it's it it, it uh, if I could bottle that drink I'd be a billionaire, <laughs> you know? so uh, that that's the only way to explain it for me. Did you get that same feeling with MMA or just was this just a new thing altogether? Oh close um you you definitely feel it because there is that um i guess i mean it's the closest feeling to i don't know if it's it like death kill somebody with your bare hands or what you know what 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 it is but it's like that fear like man uh i almost lost my eye in my second fight i don't know if 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 you knew that i took a, a a knuckle directly to the eyeball the very first punch of my second fight against Jim Mallers. And uh, this fight against a guy like Joe Elmore, who's way more power puncher than Jim Mallers, I really wanted to prove that my chin had never been compromised. Like with 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 the Jim Mallers fight, you can see it. I just couldn't see anything out of my eye. I couldn't see a thing. Like I, 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 I seen like a red blob was all I could see. And uh, my pupil is actually dilated half the size bigger than my right side for the rest of my life because of the damage that I took in that one fight. Thank God he didn't detach my retina. But the way the doctor explained it to me, I had a hickey 
on my eyeball after that fight. Like it was, it was, uh, you ever seen a guy that gets that surgery when they get their retina reattached? It looked just like that, like a red eyeball with a black pupil inside it, basically a pupil this big. And, uh, that's how my eye was for like three weeks after the, the Jim Ellers fight. But I wanted to prove to people that he never compromised my chin. He didn't hit me to where I never knew where I was at. I knew where I was at the, the whole time. I just knew I couldn't see anything and I panicked. I went into, you know, they say fight or flight. All I've ever known is fight. And everybody kept telling me, why didn't you just run away for a little bit and get to your corner and sit down? Because everything in my brain was saying, you can't see hit this guy back right now. So I kept running right at him. And every time he had punched me on this side, it was like getting sucker punched. I thought the referee was punching me. I was like, somebody else is in here hitting me because I I can't see this guy's fist coming at me. So anybody knows who's taking the cheap shot, which it wasn't a cheap shot. Jim landed a very fortunate punch and he finished the fight. And, and, you know, of course, I give him all the respect in the world for that. But I wanted to prove like Joe Elmore was the number one guy for five months straight. They kept ranking him number one. He was crumbling people with every punch. He was just, I mean, if he touched you, you were going down. So I made a deal with my coaches. We were in the back. I said, I'm not going down one time and I'm never going to show him if he hurts me and I'm going to put him down. And in the first round, I don't care what anybody says. I put him <laughs> down. That, that was a knockdown. I don't know why, what ref said what he saw when we were in there, but that was a definitely punch like that, that big cut on his forehead from this right hand and him being on the ground, that was a knockdown. So um, and, and, you know, of course, respect to Joe Elmore. He, he never was like out of it or anything else. He took everything I could give, but he did go down, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. What's interesting is that the sport has really taken off over the last yeah. couple of years, like especially some of the names that, that have been brought over, like Knuckle Mania, the, the card yeah. page debuted on. Yeah. That was super fun, man. And a lot of people got to like experience Bare Knuckle for the first time watching yeah. Paige fight. And we got to know Britton Hart a little bit more and her crazy personality, which is just yeah. infectious. And the fan base just continues to grow. So I'm curious, how big do you think this can get? I, I, I think the sky's the limit, man. I really do. I, I feel like uh, I'm super excited to still be a part of it, um, maybe as a, a commentator or, uh, you know, a fighter that, 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 that does interviews with other fighters. Like, I know what emotions they're going through. I know what questions they get asked and what questions get on our nerves and all those little insights. So I'm, I'm grateful that they're going to keep me around and, and, and hopefully give me one of those platforms to continue to help the sport grow. And uh, I know what fans want to hear from us because I, you know, I talk to, I, I conversate with fans all the time. And as a fighter, knowing that having that insight, I think I do a much better job than some of the guys that they have on there now, which they're doing an amazing job, but anything I can do to help grow, it doesn't need help growing. That's a, the crazy thing about it. I really feel like it's like you said, the infectious, personalities that are in it and just just uh, the the combat aspect of it it's like the modern day gladiators you know it's 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 not like it's to me and i hate to say this because i was in the ufc for so long but i think it's better than the ufc um fight people still show up to mma fights and they still say why are they wrestling why are they on the ground? Like people are not, people want to see a fist fight. If you don't believe me, go to a boxing match, go to an MMA match, go to a baseball game, go to a football game. If there's a fist fight in the audience, everybody in the crowd is like this, <laughs> watching that fist fight. You know, people want, I don't know what it is about a fist fight, but people love to see those. And, uh, you know, the, the, the gore and the the knots and the 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 way people look and the the you know we're professional athletes so we take these shots and we keep going they're like oh my god that one would have floored me and you know we're still out there so i think it's just intriguing to people and uh i really feel like dave feldman is a genius man i i i wish i had come up with this idea way before he did and and essentially i kind of did because uh in the back back there when we're in the ufc 
they used to make me pick my gloves out. And this one made Dave Feldman call me. Um, they would tell us, pick the glove size that you want. And I was like, give me the extra smalls. And they're like, well, you got to wrap your hand under that. I was like, I don't even care about wraps. Give me the smallest gloves that we got so I can hit them with these. And that's it. And I would always say, why do we wear gloves? You know, we're protecting our knuckles to keep hitting a guy as hard as we can. I get it. But why not let us just go out there and 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 be smarter, you know, be a little more technical, land punches a little bit better. Um, and 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 that's what bare knuckle is, man. So Dave heard about all those things that I used to say. So he reached out to me. He sent me bare knuckle one with uh Tony uh and uh Beltron. I, I can't remember Tony's last name. Uh, anyways, those the two big heavyweight guys when they fought each other, he sent me that, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have to do this." So, like I said, a week later, I talked my wife into it and made a deal with God, made a deal with the company, and here I was, man. So it worked out. Unreal. And it's funny you say that about you know what sticks and what doesn't because you know a lot of people who used to complain about wrestling and MMA, people would just be like, "Well, go watch Glory or go watch Lion yeah. Fight, like watch." Muay Thai kickboxing, but it the the kickboxing game and the Muay Thai stuff never really hit in the U.S. Like it, it, no matter how much they try and how many different organizations, it just doesn't work. Do you think it's just the name bare knuckle, like just that thought, that kind of feeling that that makes it so popular? You know, you know what I think it is about bare knuckle as well. Um, Watch me and the Elmore fight. Just watch that fight, and you're gonna see nonstop action. There is no low in the fight. There is no uh, sitting back, waiting, trying to set something up. Think about kickboxing. It's an interesting game, but when you get a chess match between two great kickboxers, they set each other up with their legs. They really don't use their hands unless they can follow up on something. And people don't necessarily, when they watch a fight, that's what they're there for. They want to see a fight. And bare knuckle is just that. I mean, that's all that it is. And when, when you take a guy like me and Joe and you put two guys in there who don't know how to back up, who don't know how to retreat, who don't know how to surrender, because let me tell you, I seen blood gushing out of this man's head. Like it was squirting in the air like a fountain. And he was looking at me like, I don't care. You know, I'm coming after you. And I was like, I wanted to like sit back and tell him like, hey, man, you have gut bus- gut, gut, uh, blood gussing out of your head. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing. And, and, and that's what people want to see, man. That's what it is. I have to ask because, I mean, you've been here before and we've heard retirements and combat sports and they don't often stick. And it's an itch, yeah. especially when you've been doing this as long as you have. It's yeah. hard to ignore can yeah. you confidently say with 100% vigor, this is it? We absolutely unequivocally saw your last fight? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, because of the way that it happened, because of the way that I felt, because of um, God kept every promise to me. So I'm going to hold my word and keep my promise to him as well. And uh, maybe people won't understand that. And maybe they'll say, well, you know, one guy told me, man, you look like you were in your prime. You're crazy to walk away. And uh, that's when you're supposed to walk away. That's when you're supposed to do it. Um, like I said, leave when they don't want you to. Don't leave when they're pushing you out the door. And uh, I still have all my cognitive tissue in my brain. I still talk well. I can still see well. Um, I feel good. So, um, yeah, why, why risk that? When people talk about you, you'll forever be tied to the Korean zombie rivalry, especially that first fight you guys had in WEC in 2010. One of the all-time great fights. And for new fans who haven't seen that fight, when this interview is over, go watch it. It's absolutely (laughs) ridiculous. But you got the split decision there, and he got you the second time around with the twister. Is there... I don't think you necessarily is are, are considered... I would say you're not a guy who like lives with regrets at all, but is there like a part of you that wish you could have that third fight with him to kind of answer the question once and for all who the better guy was? I always thought about that. And if you look at the numbers on our second fight, we were identical on punches landed and uh, uh, everything else. So it was all, it was, uh, it's always been a crazy matchup between me and him. I think stylistically 
we make sense for each other. Our styles just blend so well. Um, I thought about a third fight with him for years. And of course he was climbing the ladder and I was falling down. And so of course for me, it made way more sense to try to fight a guy who was on his way up. And for him, it didn't make sense to fight a guy that was on the way down. Um, our pats did cross tight twice. We are one and one. I'm comfortable with that. I think he is as well. We're actually pretty decent friends. We have a, uh, a speech, uh, difference, but his commentator tells me good things. So hopefully he's telling me the truth. Um, we, uh, or his translator, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we, uh, we're actually pretty good friends and, and seeing his, uh, his last couple fights have been saddening to me. I always want guys that have beaten me before, uh, to, to, to go higher and higher. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I thought about, I thought about that when I first got into bare knuckle, bringing, bring, you know, calling one of those guys out, trying to see if we could do a third one there. Uh, I think they're up there. So, uh, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't have a taste for it anymore, to be honest with you. Um, really happy with the way that this one ended. Uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, being awarded an award at, in Belfast, you know, in, in, for, uh, the bare knuckle stuff. And, uh, I'm just happy with the results right now, man. And, and, uh, after really this hat last year and a half of preparing for this last fight, I'm at peace, man. I feel really good about the decision and really at 41, I mean, the clock's working against me no matter what. So, um, I, I just, uh, I heard a lot more. I had to do an ice bath last night. Then I went and sat in the sauna afterwards and, uh, I, I felt it, man. I felt all 41 years piling up and, uh, you know, it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm happy. And, uh, I, I like, like, like going out on top is the best way. And I think that's, what's going to keep me out. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just that that's where I'm at now. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen my wife, but she's a tough customer, man. And, <laughs> and uh, that, that would be a hell of a fight too. So I don't want to do that either. Yep. I understand where you're coming from. I'm a married man myself. Um, okay, <laughs> when you kind of like, when you look back on this career of yours, is it the first zombie fight that sticks out to you as like the go-to memory? Like what are like, if, if the Leonard Garcia biography comes out, you want to hook him with the first chapter, right? Like what's the first yeah. chapter going to be about? Um, you know, I, 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 I would like to, 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 I, I hate thinking about one fight being more important than the other. When, when, when I look back, I want, uh, somebody asked me this question a while back and I sat, sat and thought about it and, 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 and played it out. I would love to have a library of all of them, you know, without, without the stories, without the clips, without everything to watch the rise, the fall, the rise, the fall, the rise. Um, and I got lucky because I rose quickly and then I fell and then I rose quickly again and then I fell and then I rose quickly again. If you watch my career um, throughout every single uh, organization that I fought for, I either won the title or competed for it. Every single one. I never fought for an organization and didn't challenge for the belt. Never. Like I always, always reached the, the, the highest point of, of, of every organization that I worked for. So, um, I think that's the story, you know, strive to be the best, you know, and, and, and that's what I always did. Um, and I always wanted to be the best at, at, at anything that I did. And now that I'm doing oil, you know, oil field automation out here in Texas, it's like, I want to be the best at that. And, 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 uh, that's always my goal is to be the best at, at whatever it is that I do and teaching my kids to do that now. I think now it's going to be more of a focus on them than myself. I think I've accomplished uh, several things and, and now to see them grow and, and to see them go out and, and, and tackle their goals and help them along the way. That's, that, that's my drive now. That's a good way to look at it, especially with the kids and everything. So like outside of striving to be the best, I mean, that's that, 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 that'd be like a great piece of advice to give to anybody. But if you could give like this next generation of fighters, you know, a, a very valuable piece of advice, a piece of wisdom that you could pass on from, you know, your years experience in MMA, bare knuckle, the combat sports world in general, what would you say to them? 
um, train, like take, take training as seriously as possible. But the biggest piece of advice that I can give them and the reasons that I fell so hard is, uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid, man. Don't, when people start to tell you you're the best, when people start to make you feel like you're the best, when you're beating everybody up at the gym and you start to think you're the best, don't start going out there and showing that because yes, men are the most dangerous people in the gym. Uh, I think when you have coaches, when you have training partners, when you have people all around you that are telling you, oh man, there's nothing better than you. You're going to hit somebody. They're going to crumble. You're going to do this and they're going to fall. You can't lose. When you believe that you're in for it. And, uh, I seen that in my opponent, this fight, um, you know, I, I, and, and I remember that guy, uh, in 2010 that faced Mike Brown, which was me. I remember, I remember Leonard being that guy. I remember being in the gym and I remember training and they're like, Oh man, as soon as you touch Mike, he's gone. Doesn't matter what you hit him with. He's fallen. People in the gym were falling all over the place. My coaches were telling me, Oh, they were holding pads for me and they'd take the pad off. Like my hand hurts. You're hitting so hard. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Mike Brown went in there and ripped my head off with that right hand. And they told me, you can't be hurt. You, you can't be hurt. Nothing. I mean, he can hit you with the kitchen sink. He hit me with way more than the kitchen sink that day. And, uh, that's, that's, that's the best advice I could tell anybody. Don't ever drink the Kool-Aid, man. Don't ever believe that you're the best because, there is a young man or an old man out there training and busting his butt. And uh, if you run into that guy that's getting ready, you're going to lose. So uh, if I've got the, the, the best advice I could give anybody is prepare yourself like you're nothing every single time. Always look to improve. Never look to be the best. Always look for improvement, man. Keep finding the best way to get better. All right. Well, I'm going to take your advice right now because you said yeah. – you said earlier that if BKFC offered you a position to, to, to do interviews, that'd be something you'd be interested in because you know what fighters like to be asked. You also know what fighters are annoyed to be asked. So yeah. let me ask you, what what kinds of questions annoy fighters? Oh, man. Is this the best preparation? Are you... Are, uh, 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 are, are you, uh, you know, is this the most ready that you've ever been or... <laughs> Those questions drive you nuts as a fighter, man. You hate, like, what do you want me to say? No, I'm not ready. Like, uh, well, you know, I didn't really train yesterday. Uh, I ate McDonald's today. Like, I mean, you know, ask serious questions, man. Hey, man, you know, how, 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 how are you feeling? We're always going to lie. We're always going to say I feel great, feel fantastic. I had a broken jaw once going into the Takaya fight, and they're like, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. You know, I feel <laughs> really shock. Uh, But, you know, fi fighters always lie. They're never going to tell you the truth. They're never going to tell you where their weight's really at. They're never going to tell you how they really feel. So uh, play into that a little bit. You know, always ask them questions, like, with not a definite answer. Are you going to win this fight? Yes or no? Like, of course they think they're going to win, you know? Uh you know, questions like and, and when 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 reporters ask us, what's your game plan or how do you see this fight going? Like, I'm not telling you, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to tell you how I see this fight going because he's listening. You know, as fighters, man, that's all we do. We're searching the Internet. You put a picture with the training partner on there. I'm looking up that training partner. I'm seeing who he is, what he does, why he's there. What does he do that's similar to me? What's he getting you ready for? Um, we study everything, man. And uh, fighters that don't do that don't make it very far. But uh, those, those, those are things, man. Just just uh, not don't don't ask definite answer questions. Ask more roundabout stuff like, man, you know, you looked real good in your last fight. How do you plan on continuing that growth, you know, into this fight? Is that, you know, 
they're never, I mean, we always lie. Like I said, we always, we never tell the truth. We always say, yeah, you know, I did this or I did that. We never tell you, I brought in this world champion to help me get ready. This coach right here has the best insight on this or that. We never say those things we will on our opponents to know. Well said. I see. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot as well. Luckily, I don't ask most of those questions anyways, but uh, that's good to know. But Leonard, this this is an honor. Congratulations on an incredible career, an amazing performance on Friday. And like I said, and you said it as well, always great to go out with a win. And uh, I respect you a lot, man. Thank you again for the time. All the best to you on this post-fight chapter of your life, my man. Awesome, man. Thank you, sir. And thank you for taking the time to interview. And it's great guys like you that make us who we are, man. So I appreciate it.